About 30 years ago, Miss Mariah Ward of Huntingdon, with only 7,000 pounds, had the good luck to captivate Sir Thomas Bertram of Mansfield Park in the county of Northampton, and to be thereby raised to the rank of a baronet's lady with all the comforts and consequences of a handsome house and large income. Hello everyone, my name is Daria, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be continuing with the Austin themed content on my channel by bringing you the fourth installment of my Battle of the Austin Adaptation series. It's been almost a year now since that last installment in this series on the Persuasion Adaptations. I'm so sorry. I really- there's no excuse. There's no excuse besides my own laziness. So this video is going to function differently than all the previous ones in this series because my relationship to the source material, Mansfield Park, is very different from my relationship to Austen's other novels. The most glaring difference being that I actually have never read Mansfield Park until I had to for this video. I know, I know, I can hear the booing, I can see you, you know, grabbing your tomatoes to throw at me, but actually, you know what, I don't have an excuse. <laughs> Go ahead and call me a fake fan if that's what you want to do. I won't blame you. I'm going to be honest, Mansfield Park has never really captured my attention. I watched the 2007 made-for-TV film when I was young and never had any desire to watch it or engage with Mansfield Park ever again until it became necessary for this video. Now before I jump into talking about the adaptations, I first want to talk about Mansfield Park, the novel. Mansfield Park can be considered Austen's forgotten and overlooked novel, particularly because of the gripes that people have with its main character and heroine Fanny Price. Gripes which, I must admit, I also had. The chief complaint about Fanny is that she's just boring. She's a thoroughly uninteresting protagonist, she does not have any agency in the novel, and thus it is all the characters around her who actually outshine her. People also complain that she is too prudish and too high and mighty, and like I said, I did think all of those things upon reading this novel. And it doesn't really help that on top of this novel being considered boring, it is also one of Austen's longest novels. I know that when I come to Austen, the things that I am looking for are one, wit and humor, two, social commentary, and three, and perhaps most importantly, grand sweeping romance. And this novel really only delivered on one out of three of those things. After finishing this book, I definitely think that I did myself a disservice going into it expecting romance a la Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion, or wit and humor like in Emma, because I believe that this novel is actually a moral tale above anything else. And the romance in this novel actually really only functions as a reward for Fanny being so steadfast and morally upright. This novel is all about a young woman who has been severely emotionally abused and neglected, who has been made to feel like less than by everyone in her life who claimed to care for her, and she just kind of has to sit there and take it and try to survive. Throughout the novel, Fanny stays her course. She constantly says that she does not agree with a lot of what other people are doing. She is very like moral and upstanding and sticks to her principles, and everything that I'm describing is fine. Looking back on Mansfield Park, I don't know if I can say that I am mad at it because I don't think you can be mad at a novel for being what it is. I believe this novel was meant to function as a moral tale above anything else, and that's fine, but that's not the type of story that I like. I have to admit that if I had sat down immediately after finishing this book to film this review, I probably would have been way harsher on Fanny and dismissed her as boring and prudish and annoying like I know a lot of other people have, but I actually watched two videos in particular that kind of changed my mind about Fanny. The first video was a book Olive's defense of Fanny Price, and the second one was a video on the women in Austin, and that was written and hosted by Princess Weeks. However, even though I think I can objectively appreciate Fanny and understand what Austin was going for with her character, that doesn't mean that I like her. In fact, I don't really like her. I find her, I'm sorry, I have to agree with the masses here, 
boring. Aside from a select few very entertaining side characters who were actually meant to be the villains of this story, and some fascinating commentary on slavery and the ways in which this family economically benefits from it, I find this entire novel pretty boring. And when it comes to the romance in this book, it really, it wasn't there. There was no romance because Fanny and Edmund only really get together in like the last paragraph of the novel and we're just told that they fall in love and get married. Also, Edmund is an idiot. He spends the entire novel overlooking Fanny and just being thoroughly enraptured by Mary Crawford, whom yes, is very entertaining, but also very vain and obsessed with social status, which he claims to dislike in her. So he really, he just has the hots for her and he's willing to just sort of like, basically forego his own morals and principles because she's pretty. Also, yes, I know Fanny and Edmund are first cousins and I'm pretty sure that that will turn anyone off, but that's what it was back then. So I'm not gonna harp on that for too long. So those are my general thoughts on Mansfield Park, Fanny Price, and the romance between her and Edmund. Now, getting into the rankings, actually, you know what, let me take it back because I am not going to be ranking these adaptations. I hope this doesn't sound too harsh, but I don't know that I care enough about the source material to then care about the adaptations and them remaining faithful to said source material. In all my previous videos, I had a certain attachment to the novel. I wanted certain things to be adapted a certain way. I had opinions. This time though, I don't know. I mean, I just watched the films. I don't really have any particular attachment to any of them. There were things that I enjoyed about some of them and things that I didn't like and things that I just passively watched and absorbed. It very much paralleled my experience reading the original book. So instead of giving you a ranking, I am simply going to move through these movies in chronological order, starting with the 1983 miniseries. As has been previously discussed on my channel, whenever you have an adaptation and production from the 70s or 80s, you are going to get very, how do I say this nicely? An original camera work? That actually wasn't that nice. Anyway, basically going into this adaptation, I knew that I wasn't going to get really incredible cinematography, camera work, blocking, set design, and I was right, there was none of that. In general, this production was very dull and not that fun to look at. However, if you are looking for extreme accuracy to the source material, this is the adaptation that you want to go for. Any 70s or 80s production is basically just going to lift all the dialogue straight from the book and slap it on a script and have the actor say it. At the same time, this dialogue is often delivered in a stilted and awkward manner. I am assuming that a lot of the actors who are playing in this show are predominantly theater actors and it often feels like you're watching a staged adaptation of this novel and someone just like has a camera just standing still capturing everybody. I have to say that this 80s style of filming that is very muted and stationary actually fits the tone of Mansfield Park far better than it does, let's say, Emma. Every iteration of the character in this version is as close to the book counterpart as you can get. I am going to shout out in particular the actress who plays Mrs. Norris and the actress who plays Lady Bertram. They were really stellar. They are incredibly funny and interesting characters, even though they're very punchable, particularly Mrs. Norris, who is the one who is continuously reminding Fanny that she is worthless, that she is not on the same class level and should not be considered equal to anyone else in that house. What I particularly liked about this adaptation was more inclusion of Mariah and Julia's characters. They feature very heavily in the novel, often having their own scenes entirely separate from Fanny, and they have their own character arcs, and they included that in this version, which I enjoyed and I appreciated. One thing I'll say about this adaptation, and I don't know if this is like a good thing or a bad thing, in making Edmund just very close to his book character version, he also was so insufferable in this version. I swear to God, anytime this man opened his mouth, I wanted to deck him. He was so wishy-washy. Just, ooh, this man pissed me off. You have no idea. You have no idea. This man is just a whiny little baby. Like, I do not understand the attraction at all. Fanny, I don't even like you that much, but this guy? This guy. Are you sure about that? Anyway, I really don't have anything to say about this adaptation. I don't have any like strong feelings for it or against it. It just kind of is. 
you know, if you're looking for an extremely book accurate adaptation, then uh, check this one out. Moving on to the 1999 adaptation, which I can easily say is the most far removed from the original source material. Fanny Price in this version is just nothing like Fanny Price in the book. She is a writer. She is constantly writing letters to her younger sister Susan. She wants to write stories for a living. She is mischievous and headstrong and opinionated. This is the Lizzie Bennettification of Fanny Price. Fanny will often break the fourth wall and talk directly to the camera. I don't really know if this fits the original Fanny Price because I mean she damn near never said anything unless she was like begged to give her opinion but then again this Fanny is nothing like the book Fanny so I guess it makes sense for her. There are so many changes from the book to the screen. The entire storyline involving Henry Crawford and his wanting to have Fanny as a wife is way more drawn out and way more intense in this version than in any other version or even in the book. I feel like there were really times when I thought that she was going to end up with Henry. There's even a sequence in which Fanny accepts his proposal and he picks her up and spins her around and they kiss. I'm not gonna lie you guys, watching that scene, I might have felt a thing or two. It was cute, okay? Another big difference is that in this movie Fanny is sent to go live with her family in Portsmouth more so as like a direct punishment for rejecting Henry. Whereas in the book, it was more just a way for her to go see her family, enjoy time with them and get some kind of respite from Henry constantly like coming around and like bothering her. This adaptation also completely gets rid of Fanny's brother, William. He is not mentioned even once. And William plays a really big role in once again, the Henry Crawford and Fanny Price like relationship. Henry gets William a, you know, more elevated posting in the Navy. And this is like kind of a thing that he uses to manipulate Fanny into agreeing to be his wife. Now we're coming to the most significant difference between this film and the book counterpart, which is the emphasis that this film puts on the Bertram's family connection to the slave trade. It is sprinkled in throughout the original text of Mansfield Park that Sir Thomas has connections to the slave trade and that he potentially owns a plantation in Antigua. And this forces the reader to call into question, you know, the morality of these people because Edmund, Fanny, and Sir Bertram are supposed to act as like the moral pillars in this novel. They have principles, they believe in doing the right thing, and those three characters are like these upstanding morally good people. But then you have to remember that Sir Thomas Bertram is a slave master. He cannot be a good person. He is not a good person. And no character in this novel is exempt. In the 1999 film, Edmund points out very rightly to Fanny that every single person living in this house economically benefits from slavery. All of these people claim to be moral, to be good, to care about principles, but they don't. They don't care about any of that shit and they are so comfortable just casually accepting the economic benefits of overt racism, slavery, systemic white supremacy. Finally, I want to discuss the 2007 made for TV film. Now the main complaint that I have you know what? It's not even really a complaint because like I said, I don't care enough about the source material to really have like complaints. But let's just say the main thing that I noticed while watching this film is that there simply wasn't enough time to tell this story. This movie is only an hour and a half. And as I mentioned, this book is a thick one. Okay, this is one of Austin's longest novels, if not her longest. So trying to condense everything that happens in this book into one hour and a half is hard work and um, I don't really think that they pulled it off. This film has a lot of logical gaps. Oftentimes we will skip from one scene to the next and I feel as if I've missed several moments of character development and relationship development. I never know what is happening and I think if I didn't know the source material so that I could fill in those logical gaps, I would have been completely lost. So that is just like a glaring issue that recurs throughout this entire movie and never really lets up. Next, let's talk about the individual characters, starting with Fanny, who is so far removed from her book inspiration. This version of Fanny is mischievous and fun-loving. She's always running off to get up to something, oftentimes with Edmund, who is like her bosom buddy. Mrs. Norris is not nearly as annoying, meddlesome, judgmental, or loud-mouthed as her book counterpart, which is a bit of a shame. Like I mentioned, the 1983 Mrs. Norris was like perfect. And even though everything that she said was terrible, 
I found her very entertaining. When it comes to Henry Crawford, I didn't find him particularly engaging or charming. I would definitely not believe that he is someone who could get Mariah, Julia, and even Fanny a little bit to like him. I also was like so thrown because he looked so similar to Tom. I was constantly getting them confused. The one actor that I think stood heads above the rest was Hayley Atwell as Mary Crawford. That was perfect casting. She was incredible in this role. I just loved everything about her in this movie. There were lots of changes made to the plot, such as Mary Crawford being against Henry going after Fanny, whereas in the novel she was kind of egging him on and encouraging him. The ball that was meant to be thrown in Fanny's honor that occurs in the book is actually turned into a picnic and you know just some fun and games on a sunny day. Fanny is never sent back home to see her family in Portsmouth. Instead she's just left alone at Mansfield Park. Also at the end of this movie they tried to like I guess throw in a bit of romance like I mentioned in the book. It's just told to us in the final paragraph that Edmund and Fanny got married. The romance is really not that important in the book. So I think they tried to add a bit to it. At the very end of this movie, Edmund is just kind of like looking at Fanny and then just like suddenly realizes that he loves her and you know, oh it's it's always been her, which you know, I'm not usually a fan of but I guess I'll let it slide. I think Mansfield Park is definitely a text I'm going to have to return to. It's her lesser known novel, it's one that people tend to forget. It's one that I honestly find a bit forgettable, but it's also one that I, I think I can try to get more out of upon a second reading. I have to say that in general I can appreciate what Austin is doing with this novel. Having a character like Fanny Price, she has been through so much, she has been severely abused and neglected, and that sort of results in this like quiet, extremely passive nature, like more so than even like Anne Elliot who is another like more timid heroine of Austin's. I can also definitely appreciate the social commentary on the slave trade and the ways in which an English gentry, even the so-called good ones and moral ones, were allowing the slave trade to continue, not only allowing it to continue but economically benefiting from it as well. I can appreciate all those things but this novel just it really didn't do it for me and neither did any of the adaptations. So that is it for me today you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Go ahead and let me know what you think of Mansfield Park, both the novel and the adaptations. Maybe there are some of you who are huge fans of the source material and have stronger convictions about the adaptations. If so, please let me know which one of the three that I mentioned are your favorite. If you guys want to find me or follow me anywhere else, all those links will be down below. I love you all very dearly and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!